Hello and welcome back to Family Time once again. Um, I have with me Pastor Kingsley PJ from Trinity Baptist Church and Pastor Mrs. Cynthia PJ also from Trinity Baptist Church. We are continuing our discussion on our teens and potential areas for conflict. Today, one of the first areas we're going to be looking at is uh, the division of household chores and cleaning. So I'm going to start with the madam of the house, that is Pastor Cynthia. Pastor C, how can that provoke conflict in the house? That one, a big one. <laughs> because um, their natural inclination is not to do housework. So um, the moment you assign housework, or uh, say, okay, Mondays to Tuesday, Mondays this person does the dishes, Tuesday this one does the dishes, um, there's always conflict there because um, some of the conflict areas that I found myself is that, for example, in the kitchen, you say this person does this on Mondays and you know, someone to say, why is it that any time it's my day, everybody leaves their own dishes and, and that kind of thing. So it's not just conflict with the parents, it's you know, conflict with the other um, members of the family as well. So household chores is a never ending saga um, because one, they didn't want to do it in the first place. So now um, they find it very difficult to um, um, adhere to the rules. So today they'll do it, tomorrow they will not do it. And the reason why they don't do it, they'll cite all kinds of things like schoolwork and all kinds of things, or oh, I have to quickly go and do this thing, and I, when I finish, I'll come back. And they, you find that they, you don't want to see these things around, so you end up doing it, you see. So um, sometimes you want to enforce certain rules like, unless you do it, you're not going out. And that also becomes another conflict. My, the time is this, you know, they have a different clock because when you, as a mother, wake up at 6 a.m. and you, you have to do all of these things, they don't have the same clock as you do. They feel that they don't have the big responsibility as you do, so they want to wake up much later in the day. And they wake up past the time they're supposed to do whatever they need to do, and so there is constant um, conflict, constant, you know, you didn't do this and why didn't you do that? So, yeah. <laughs> so how would you, what are, what are some of the strategies that you came up with about in your home? Things you have to, to do is that if you, if you don't do it, you're not going out. This is what you're supposed to do, finish it and go out. Or sometimes you would say, okay, on a Saturday, um, you share the rules, the, 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 the chores. This person does the conservatory, this does that bit, the place, this one does this one. And I think that you just have to set certain rules. If you don't do it, you are not going out. Um, that kind of thing. I don't think, I think some, some of the rules that I've heard other people do, for example, is that um, if you don't do it, I'll not give you dinner money for school. I think that can be a little bit too much because it means that the child is not going to eat, but they need to eat to be able to study. They need to be able to eat so that they can be alert in school. So things like that I think is a little bit too harsh, but I think you, should need, you need to find something that they really like. Maybe for fitting a, t a program they love most and say, so, you know what, if you don't do it, you won't watch this um, at the time that you're supposed to watch it, you will not watch it. And I think gradually um, <laughs> they'll learn to do it because they know that if they don't, um, certain things you're going to forfeit. They're going to forfeit. Mm -hmm. okay. So rules. Rules. Mm -hmm. And then it's clear from the beginning from the what beginning. everyone has to That's do. Right. Okay. Pastor, still on the sort of the topic of chores, this is very closely related. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm asking you this and not Pastor Cynthia because you're a man and you live with five women. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I can imagine how you feel when you come and their room is untidy and it's not clean. So is that an, a, a source of conflict in your home? And if it has been, how have you resolved that issue with your girls? You see, one thing every parent will have to understand is that uh, young people just love uh, not only to sleep, but most of the times to become responsible when it comes to house home duties. And they will find every excuse not to and they will push the boundaries. They, they will push you. You always, you, they will make sure you always remind them. Mm -hmm. Even when there's a rotor, mm. if you don't, they, they will pretend it, but they know it's their turn. Mm -hmm. And I'll call you and let you know it's your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the mysteries as a pastor that parents come to me and complain about 
is how young people keep their rooms. And probably I don't think that they are alone in that because uh, it seems that I don't know why. And I don't know if it's only in the UK, the USA, or, or in the Western world only. But young people just don't like to tidy their rooms. Mm. They throw all manner of things anywhere and uh, all kinds of things everywhere. And uh, so as a parent, you will have to understand that uh, as part of their growing up, always see them as young people growing up. But you must keep on insisting, you must be very firm. You see, in life, anything that is not supervised is never done well. Works that are done and done well are works that are supervised. Hence, in uh, well-established companies, there is a CEO, then down to the supervisor, and then to the, to the cleaner. Because there must be somebody to supervise. And as parents, we supervise in love, but we make sure the job is done. And at times, we, we, we and you see, you set them an example by you yourself working. Uh, in our home, uh, Pastor C, of course, does. She's such a gifted cook. The number of times I've had to bite my tongue because of her cooking. And, um, but, Two things I can't stand in my life, dirty bathrooms and dirty living rooms. So you know what? I do that myself. Oh, that's uh, uh, yes. And mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to complain, I don't want to be shouting, I don't want to waste my energy. So I do that. And uh, they all complain that I spend hours in the bathroom. <laughs> but if they are going nowhere, they all tie me out. As soon as I come out, they all rush in because they know the place will be looking as clean. <laughs> I will make sure every corner is cleaned. I will make sure the bin is... I just, because I believe that uh, your, your washroom is one of the most important areas in your life. Mm -hmm. And I want my bathroom to be such that if I have a cup of tea and I go to my ba bathroom, I can drink it. And that is how serious I take my bathrooms. And with my living naturally as a pastor, uh, I don't want to be caught with uh, all, kind of, all kinds of things lying everywhere. So when I come, even when uh, they've eaten and they are I'll pick them up myself. Because I just, but when it comes to their turn, I make sure they do it. Well, of course, now they are big elves, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I love to hoover. I see hoovering as an exercise, especially when you hoover the stairs and you are lifting the, uh, the, the, the hoover up and down. Anytime I finish hoovering, I'm sweating. And for me, I love that. So uh, at times, some of my spiritual sons have come over, and my daughters, at times I say, no, 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 you know, this is uh, uh, a delicacy I don't share with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to do it. And I think that when it comes to the home duties, we must lead by example. And uh, we, we must let our children know that it is not wrong for mom and dad to be involved in. And as you take that lead and they see you do it. So anytime I travel, before I get back into London, my bathroom is clean, my living room is hoovered, everything is dusted. Because they know that if there is any time I'm going to complain. And, and the truth is that if I come back, and my, I will complain. And that's why I have not made up my mind to stop. See, so uh, it's something that is in every home, and I'm saying that it's in every home because numerous parents, and when you take an opinion poll, you don't interview uh, even 10,000 people, but you get the opinion of everybody. It's a problem every parent has. And uh, 
Parents should not become frustrated about that. They are not alone. But we should keep on keeping on by telling our children that it is not hygienic for them to keep their rooms uh, untidy. Uh, um, if they are friends, of course, well, if you tell them when your friends say, oh, daddy, because they've been to their friends' rooms and theirs is better. <laughs> I remember, uh, uh, <laughs> it is well. <laughs> so Pastor, the, the strategy that I get from both of you in terms of cleanliness and household chores is to make sure it is clearly defined, everyone knows what they're doing, and then stick And keep it. reminding them, and because they will do it <laughs> by <laughs> default. To. If you stop, you end up doing it yourself. yourself. Okay. Okay, but Pastor, you are in a special category because you like hoovering and oh, cleaning it. the bathroom. And, uh, you know, I wish all the men out there will emulate Pastor's example. You know, I'm sure you have very happy yes. wives if you emulated <laughs> Pastor's example. I want to encourage all the men to join me. Yeah. Very good. But men. it's a good exercise. And I bet you it's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, another area that I want us to look at, I think it sort of follows from the cleanliness and the chores is taking care of family property. No, Julie, just before you come to that, one thing I think we forgot to talk about is picking forks and plates. <laughs> from and, and cups and glasses and mugs. Oh, my God. That one, uh, I think it was uh, Dobson. Who's, Dobson as oh, well, who ahead. said that, oh, if you thought you were the only parent who picked up um, mugs or whatever, which is now, what's it, um, moss, what's grown over there? Yeah, yeah. 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 you're not the only one. <laughs> kind know, of thing. things growing in them. <laughs> growing in them. Mm -hmm. Because they'll leave, maybe the a hot chocolate or whatever, a cup of hot chocolate, they'll leave it in their bedroom. By the time you go back, the thing is just hardened. The, the, and, you it's know, growing from, mushrooms. You know, and it's like, so sometimes, sometimes you can't find things around the house all of a sudden. You find all these folks returning <laughs> home because they were in somebody's room. Somebody has decided to return them back to <laughs> where they belong. <laughs> so, but you know what? The good thing is that there comes a time when they grow out of it. You know, the, they, they, they now become mature. They think to themselves, oh my goodness, I'm growing up. You know, um, I need to start getting, you know, getting, you know, getting my room tidy and wanting to come to my room and see my, my dressing table nicely done and, you know, feel that I'm a lady. And so they do grow out of it. I must say that they do. Um, a lady once said to me, you would not believe that the daughter um, left, you know, got, grow, you know, left home and bought her own place and um, left home and, and went to, you know, she hadn't married yet, but she just left, got her own place and started uh, her own home. And she said, you, you would, you would, when you go to my daughter's home, she says, even me, I, I'm even, I don't even know whether to sit down or stand. I said, this daughter of mine, who would not keep her <laughs> in the room, go and see how she has set up her own home. Her own home. And you think, okay, so you knew how to do all of this. So I think in a sense, sometimes what they're thinking is, this what is your home. Yeah, yeah. But my home. Mm. Mommy would do it anyway. You hear them say things like me, like my chairs will be cream mm -hmm. chair. I've heard them say things like that. Yeah. So they have a vision and a picture of what their homes will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, it's your home. So. <laughs> and they watch you, you see, they watch you, how you keep your own home. And the truth is that not only are they watching, they are learning and uh, it stays with them and they take it with, uh, uh, with them when, when, when they leave home. So um, we, we have to be cool about that. Yeah. <laughs> and keep insisting and keep pushing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But to go back to um, the point I was making uh, yes. before Pastor came in, um, looking after family property yes. because it sort of you know, lines up with that, um, you know, family, I suppose the forks and the plates and are also family property. But, you know, I'm looking at things like, uh, you know, cars and the TV and uh, other things at home, you know, uh, with daughters, sometimes mom, they might borrow your things, borrow your jewelry, all sorts of things. Um, you know, 
looking after is that a, an area that provokes conflict sometimes a lot <laughs> i'd say that in a lot of ways it does because again it's your thing it's, it's your tv <laughs> it's your uh, sky box sometimes the way they operate the thing i think has to stop before they do it's you know they just don't take that that their time they press the button and the way they press the button it's like ah, if this if you bought this thing with your money you would be gentle in the way you're treating this thing. And sometimes you talk about borrowing things. Sometimes they don't borrow. They, they, they just take. They just <laughs> take. They lock their doors. They have locks to their doors. They will lock their doors. Mm -hmm. But you have an open plan, open <laughs> bedroom. So by the time you come, they've taken some of the things without even asking you. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and they just leave it anywhere, anyhow, thinking, well, oh. you know. So that is another um, and, and you have to also just keep, I always tell them that I used to be very quiet. <laughs> and that, and I, I think it's true. I think that over the years, the talking, um, and don't do this and don't do that, and, you know, has made me become <laughs> a bit of a talkative as a parent. And I've come this way because <laughs> they're talking. Don't put this there. Cover, you know, when you open a lid, yeah. something, put the lid, put the lid back on. You come and the thing is ah, lidless. <laughs> you ask. Or something just poured on the, water poured on, on the floor in the kitchen. You'll ask everybody, mm, no, I didn't do this. So, the, so I always say that you're waiting for this person, this one person who is called mother, to come and wipe the thing. If we just do it when you see it. You know. So that one, you have to talk, keep talking about it but uh, it shouldn't be in, insulting and and yeah or engage in a mm -hmm. an argument and engage in a fight because i think that is what we want to avoid is is a bad picture for a parent to be really angry with their child or mm -hmm. or getting into a fight with with their with their teenage child i think you are always the the the, the head of the home either the, the father is the head of the home and the woman supporting the, the husband to be heads of the home so you always, you always have an upper hand. You enforce things, you tell them, but never get into an argument. But you have to keep talking. I think that the talking, uh, we, have become, we have all become talkatives. It's good to talk. It's yeah. good to talk. Pastor Gay. Yeah, uh, Juliet, um, when they put their things in the washing machine, mm -hmm. they are so impatient, even turning the washing machine up before opening mm -hmm. to take them out. It's another wahala. At times, the wash machine is on, <laughs> the door is door, open. And how they manage to open the door? The door is open. Normally, you can't open the door yeah. when but the there's machine some, is There's in. some machines that you, you can. Yes, some of the modern machines you can. And they've taken the machine is on. <laughs> and, and if you are not, and they sit in the car, mm -hmm. that is when they want to have. And you see, with me, I've got five women in my house and um, uh, by God's grace I have uh, uh, now I have six, do six five daughters and a wonderful wife so six women six women <laughs> and by God's grace we've got a seven seater okay. and it's in the car well of course now uh, five again because one is married and has left and that's when they want to eat their cakes. Cake? In my car. And one of the things I can't stand is a dirty car. Mm -hmm. But that is where they want to eat their chocolates. That is where, so I'm looking through the driving mirror. And they're eating in the back. <laughs> <sighs> and, 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 and I'm shaking my head and they are giggling and they are laughing. Because they know when they do that, I'll, I'll be upset. So they'll do it. You know? And, uh, but it's very important that we understand that their aim is not to damage uh, the, the, the properties. I remember when my guests were going, do you know how much I bought this? For, now I don't see all those things again. And, uh, <laughs> because for them, is that this property? So it's theirs. And they don't mind how much you bought it for. But it is very important that you let them know 
this cost that much, this cost that much, this is the value of this, and if this uh, vase is kept well, by the next 20 years, the value will be this amount. This old clock you see hanging there is that much, that many years old, and if you look after it well, one day your grandchildren are coming to enjoy, and you have to find a way of helping them, you know, than it, because uh, when it comes to taking care of family property, you must be ready that there will be conflict there. Because uh, for them, the most important thing is mom and dad and not the properties. And they don't want you to use properties to insult them. So it is very important that you sit them down and let them know why it is important to value uh, properties, helping them to understand that it is past and parcel of their growth. One day when they grow and they are working, they must become responsible and it starts from home. We must teach them. But it's a big area of conflict. I think it reflects the fact that, um, you know, when teenagers um, have the new cars and they want to they get insurance, it reflects the fact that, fact that the insurance is quite high. And I think it's a universal thing mm -hmm. that young people can be careless. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a season where they are just simply <laughs> careless. And so they don't care about whatever property that they are using at home. And so I think that is quite a universal thing. And uh, we just have to be ready to, to battle that thing. Insurers have done well yeah. because my first daughter, uh, when she got her first car. How old was she then, 20? 20? 20, yeah. 20 years, 19, 20 years. Her insurance was 2,000 something, yes. And that is how much they are paying. And the reason they do that is to help them to become responsible, mm -hmm. you know? They don't just want them to go, because they see them as high risk. Mm -hmm. Because of the way they drive, they turn when they shouldn't turn, they speed where they should it. Of course, now Big Brother is watching. So you can't do that. The cameras will catch you, even if there's no policeman. But their carelessness on the road is such that the insurance companies have to cover themselves. And also, it's a way of teaching them that, look, if you don't behave yourself and you are involved in an accident, uh, your next insurance bill is going to go much, much, much higher. So it's a way that society has come to the aid of parents <laughs> to help them. <laughs> I'm the insurance. <laughs> to help them, because when it comes to taking care of family property, it is a big, big, big conflict area. Mm -hmm. you know? They don't see the way we see it. And first of all, those, uh, you know, you don't have voice, but you know, I, I, you know, parents who have sons, a lot of them complain about when they get to the age where they want to drive. Mm -hmm. And th there's this whole big issue about, you know, the family car and how it's dealt with. Okay, so what advice would you give to those who have sons who may perhaps be facing yeah. uh, this problem? Uh, what I would suggest straight away is that uh, when your child turns the age at which they can go to driving school, send them immediately. And um, don't start teaching them how to drive. Personally, I believe that always take your children to the driving school first because um, over the years, you develop as a driver some habits and most of them are very bad. So if you start teaching your child how to drive, you teach that child those habits. Whereas, let them go to the driving school because the, uh, the first impressions are the main thing. So they are taught all the techniques, the discipline about proper driving, then you can take it on from there. Else when they, I started learning how to play golf and one of my pastor friends started teaching me. When I went to a golf instructor, I said, no, 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 no. The way you are playing this is bad. And you know what he said? He, he says, he tells people who want to learn how to play golf, always learn from an instructor. 
mm. never from a friend. Because along the way, they drop that discipline and they pick their own uh, standard and style. And most of the time, it is not the right way of doing things. Whereas an instructor is an instructor and will teach you the right techniques, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor K. Um, I know, you know, we don't have much time left for this session, but uh, Pastor C, just quickly, um, you know, siblings, sibling rivalry, mm -hmm. you know, where this one is competing against that one as a source of tension. How have you and uh, Pastor K dealt with that in your home? Okay. Uh, what we've done, um, most of the time we don't get into that, leave them to, um, don't side with any of them because um, the danger is that if you do um, they'll think that oh yes this is your favorite or that is your favorite um, so the the best way to handle these things is to you know you can mediate by saying you know just find a good way of talking um, but without having to say you were right or you were wrong um, I think that many times when they've done that it's part of growing up I look back at my, my own, when I was growing up, uh, my brother who comes right after me, we used to, we used to fight a lot. I mean, <laughs> wow, I don't believe that pastor <laughs> I, I Because I was the older one, I used to chase him around the house and um, with, a, with, a <laughs> with a cane, you know, and I'd say to him, I'm the older one. So I'll chase him around the house and then just hit him and then he'll be chasing me and then that kind of thing. But you know what, what since we've grown up, we are the, we know, we have a good relationship and it's all part of growing up. As a parent, if you don't handle it wisely, you will go inside with one of them and it will stick with them for years on end. But you are being this is a very big topic. So we may pick it up another time. So. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, uh, Pastor C and Pastor uh, K. Unfortunately, as usual, like I say, very big topic, but we've come to the end of our time. We've come to the end of our time together for this program. So we'll pick this issue up next time. We'll also be looking at um, discipline, the big D word. And, you know, one thing that is of a source of constant concern to parents is the way their teenagers talk to them. That is a big, big issue for a lot of parents. So when we come back next time, We'll be looking at teenagers again and then continuing the issue of uh, sibling disagreements and rivalries, looking at discipline. And then uh, the pastors here with me will offer solutions and strategies as to how best parents can cope with these things. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.